but Gareth, how, how are you feeling about Ethereum? Yeah, so I, just to agree with what Magic said is, you know, never trade just to trade, right? There's this junkie mentality where you get this uh, emotional kind of high by getting in a trade and, you know, you're just, so it's a gambler's mentality, right? And and I think I think Magic would agree is that if you're trading right, you're not gambling. All right, doesn't mean you're going to win 100% of the time, but you're at least putting the odds in your favor versus gambling, as we know, is 50-50 at best, most likely less than that. So, so I think that's a super important thing. I mean, in, in the trading room where I do mostly stocks, like literally we'll maybe average one trade a day, but we win 80%, 90% of the time, right? So it's, it's a matter of something. sometimes we sit on our hands and do no trades for like two, three days and newbies come in. They're like, what the heck are you doing? You know, and it's it's important to recognize that the market tells you when to trade. You don't tell the market when to trade, right? And, and it's you. As soon as you start telling the market when you're going to trade, you're going to lose. I mean, it's just that simple. So, so going to Ethereum, let's take a look here. And again, for for me, we had this wedge pattern, and, and basically the wedge pattern broke. It, again, when you break a level, there's always a period of time where it can technically recapture, um, but that time is ticking away. There's a, it's like a stop clock, right? And and so you can see right here, we broke below, we bounced back, but look right away, the high from from you know today slash yesterday since we just started the new candle was right there, and it couldn't get through. So can it do that in the next 24 hours? That would be important if it could recapture this upsloping trend line. If not, I think you're going to start heading down and then you start attacking this kind of low pivot from June, which was around $900 or so. That'll be your next key level. And if that breaks, you know, if Bitcoin really starts to collapse, if there's more of these kind of shady practices being done with other coins, then you're really talking about heading down to where the bull market began in 2020, where you're going down to that 600 level, 700 level, you know, maybe even a little bit lower down to five or four. Um, again, for me, I do like Ethereum longer term. I think there's a, it's, it has a ton of use case. So, so I think as you get down, you just, you know, you patiently wait, let the levels hit and then think about nibbling a little bit. But when I say nibbling a little, it's important to recognize that, you know, and I, I'm sure magic would agree with this is that, you know, I, there's plenty of levels I bought that I thought were going to be great levels and the market said, nope. And it went right through. And yeah. so by nibbling, you give yourself that opportunity to trade around the position a little bit, right? So so I always think about, do I want to put a quarter of what I want in, a fifth, the fourth, you know, a third, and then I give myself that ability. Once you commit all your capital, there's no trading around that position. You're done. Yeah. You're just riding that. And so as a good trader, you want to always be able to maneuver. I look at technical levels and I say to myself, okay, there's a 70% chance of a bounce here. So I'm going to commit X amount of capital. That means 30% chance it's going to break. So then I look for the next level. If it breaks, I buy more there. And ultimately, when you have 70% odds, you know, I, maybe not the first time, but the second time you should get that technical bounce. At one of those times, you will. And you can ultimately at least make a small amount on the trade. So the trading psychology is important. Um, one of the things I love talking about is the discipline. The mental discipline of a trader is so important. And then understanding the psychology of market. It's understand greed and fear and how to not get swept up in greed and fear, but also how to use it to your advantage, right? So when you see this kind of blood in the streets, people panicking, and you're starting to hit major technical levels, that's where you start to nibble with the technicals and the psychology of the market. So just kind of cool stuff, you know, across the board.